Hi, everyone. Uh, the first song we're going to do is by Sis Cunningham, and this is written as a result of circumstances. Her and her husband were driven out of uh, Oklahoma during the Dust Bowl because they were viewed as too left-wing or communist. So uh, this is their song, How Can You Keep On Moving? Absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, just before they sing their next song, I'd like to introduce the Fraser Union Band. We have Kathy Griffin on guitar, our beloved tenor section lead. Thank you, Kathy, for bringing us your band. We have Roger Holstock on mandolin and guitar. Thank you. And we have Barry Tudor. Thank you so much for being with us. I'll let them introduce their next song, but first I will ring the bell. became uh, one of our greatest hit <laughs> <laughs> because it hits <laughs> at uh, the gap between the haves and the have-nots. And uh, uh, we have to work hard to close that gap. Uh, so there's a piece of this that you could join in. You could join in the whole thing. We love it when people sing along. But there's a piece of this that uh, that goes, uh, seems like this old world needs a shaken up. And if you're in particular, you can sing along to that, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> Read it. 
it in the papers, you can hear it on the news. Too many people with the down and out blues. Seems like this old world needs to shake it up. There's people who don't care about what they pay. And others barely make it on a dollar a day. Seems like the soul world needs to shake it up. Don't be downhearted, don't be blue. It's up to me and it's up to you. And if we want to feel the warmth of the sun, we've got to stand up and be counted before this night is done. Too many people hungry and sick. Too many others looking for a quick fix. Seems like this whole world needs a shake it up. Too many people sleeping out on the street. Seems like this old world needs a shaking up. Don't be downhearted, don't be afraid. It's time to step out of the shade. And if we want to feel the warmth of the sun, we got to stand up and be counted before this night is done. Too much hypocrisy, too much greed. Too many lies, I don't know who can believe. Seems like this old world needs a shaking up. Thank you so much for that inspiring music. We are the alchemist and we are the elements. Our world is the laboratory and relationships the fire. I am enthralled by what I am calling alchemy, the extraordinary ability of humans to see when something needs to change and then, remarkably, to create a new. This can be both internal, a change in our hearts and our minds, or it may be external, perhaps when a small group of people agree that something needs to be done and they have the capacity to create something anew something massive, perhaps like social support and housing for the most vulnerable. Yes, we can create disasters, but we are also on a long march towards greater unification 
and greater empathy. In the words of Martin Luther King Jr., the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. Today's service embraces the magic of change, both internal and external. As an invocation and signal that our time here is holy, will you join me as we light the chalice? We kindle this flame as a symbol of this gathering. May the light of understanding illuminate our darkness. May the warmth of sharing bring us peace. Welcome, everyone. In particular, we would like to warmly welcome anyone who might be new to our congregation or nearly new. I'm wondering if you would feel comfortable enough to introduce yourself. I am going to take a moment, I am so proud, and introduce three people very dear to me. And I can see one of them is already going, I don't think so. So I am, I am wondering if uh, Nola, if you'd be willing to stand up for a moment. Nola is one of my violin students, and her dad is Chris, and her sister is Lita, who will be performing for us. Lita is performing, not Nola and Chris. Thank you very much, all three of you. Do we have anyone else who's new today who would like to introduce themselves? Yes. My name is Kate Smith. Hi. I'm my husband, Bill Marshall, and we jump ship today from Beacon uh, Unitarian um, because we wanted to hear and see our friends from uh, Fraser Union. Oh. However, I did write an email to our minister, Meg Roberts, and she said, go and hate. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. I know Meg. <laughs> How lovely. Welcome. Welcome very much. All right. We are the North Shore Unitarian community. In this community, we celebrate people from all walks of life, no matter how you make your living how you experience the sacred, no matter who you are, what's going on in your life, or whom you love, you are so welcome here. As we come together in this community, are there any amongst us who have any particular joys or sorrows in their hearts that a little bit later I will say a meditation or prayer um, and I will include the names or the global events that we might light, like to have a candle lit for. So is there anyone particularly on our hearts right now or any situations in the world? And I'm thinking of Spain and Valencia. Any? A very happy 94th birthday to you, Chuck, yesterday. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Norma. Anyone else? Any other special events or thing, people that we have particularly on our hearts? Nina, Nina. thank you. Brian Sorry? Brian, Brian. Yep. Hazel. Hazel. Lynn Webster. Lynn. Catherine. Wilcox. Catherine. Uh, Virginia, uh, Marga. Just want to say that my husband Wade is having surgery tomorrow. Okay, <laughs> surgery, Barry. My heart goes out to all the children, all the innocents uh, affected by the war. Oh. <laughs> Anyone else? Any other names? Diane, thank you. Noble. Yes. Let's just say um, next week, Tuesday. Any others? Okay.
Let us take a moment, focus on being here, being now. See if you can visualize light as you close your eyes. Light spinning within you, hovering around you. Imagine that light turning, spinning around you, through you, down to the ground, and back up through the top of your head. Now visualize your loved ones in that light. Visualize those who are struggling. Hold them in that light. May they come to know that they are so deeply loved. Visualize those that you struggle with, where you don't see eye to eye, where there's a rift, where we turn our backs in hurt and defense. Breathe deeply into the light and see that light around them. And we see the light expanding, expanding into the community of this church, expanding into the community of the North Shore and the Lower Mainland, shimmering like lights at night time. We see that light surrounding the people of Valencia in Spain, all those who have been affected by terrible hardship, climate-induced hardship. We celebrate with Yuta her 94th birthday. We hold Nina in light, Brian, Hazel, Lynn Webster, Catherine Roebuck, Virginia, Wayne, we hold you in our hearts for tomorrow. We hold all the innocents affected by war throughout our entire planet. We hold Diane and Michael Noble in our light and we hold the whole world that there may be wisdom and grace on Tuesday. May we all experience the love and the blessing that surrounds us at all times. Amen. Our opening hymn is Lean on Me number 1021 in the Teal Hymn Book. Let us join together in singing. Please rise.
to welcome up today my assistant, the very gifted and wonderful Lita. Please come on up, Lita. So Lita is going to give us an example of alchemy. From the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, alchemy is a process or power that changes or transforms something in a mysterious or impressive way. I see alchemy every day that I teach. A child walks in with a practicing parent, full of shine and promises, imagining cheerfully that after a few weeks of lessons, Lindsay Sterling will suddenly emerge, playing and glorious from the practice sessions. And here is her playing for maybe the first once or twice. Go for it. Twinkle, of course. Just the first few notes. Thank you very much, yes. <laughs> Thank you, Lita, yes. Very wonderful, well done. <coughs> it is. <laughs> three months or three years later, the shine has worn off a bit and mum and child, or dad and child, are looking a bit bedraggled. It's taking longer than they both had hoped. Here's Lita again. Excellent, Lita. <laughs> We're not there yet. <laughs> well done. The elements are becoming exposed, in the parents particularly, by the constantly applied heat, me, and the inner discipline and determination of the parent, which can be coming wobbly at this stage. What are these elements? Patience. The dance of encouragement and critique the linking of the synapses of the brain to the finest sensations of movement in the arms and fingers around the violin, and building the experience of music around a violin. What is the solvent that these changes swim in? It's love. It's delight. It is appreciation for every careful step, every attempt made with care, no matter how small. And at some point, magic happens. The child bounces into the teaching studio, declaring, I love this piece. Mom or dad is beaming. They want to play it all the time. And when the child puts bow to string, I can feel that they have reformed into something entirely new. They put their head back and delight in the music that they are creating and we are witnessing alchemy.
Thank you, Lita. I know you're all delighted in the learning in ch of children, but you may question whether you are capable of changing. You are. You are. Maybe not violin, <laughs> but what's within, yes. Time and time again throughout your life, the unseen magic of alchemy has been at work. Is it the work of your subconscious? Is it the work of collective unconscious throughout our world? Is it an unseen force, guides, angels, guiding you to a decision that allows for a new and truer path to unfold before you? Whatever is the cause, the result is a forging of a new way, a new material, a new you. We are the alchemist, and we are the elements. Our world is a laboratory, and relationships are the fire. Alchemy is defined in several ways. As I've mentioned at the beginning, it could be considered a mysterious process that changes or transforms something in an impressive way. From the Science History Institute, alchemy is now increasingly recognized as a fundamental part of the heritage of chemistry, of continuing human attempts to explore, control, and make use of the natural world." End quote. It has also been used as a model for describing the processes of change, both physical and psychological. Carl Jung, for example, was fascinated by alchemy as a model for psychological processes. I have taken the three scientific terms which I am using today, which have been used by alchemists throughout history. Thinking of these terms as models for psychological change, they are calcination. Calcination is the heating of a substance to induce decompensation, to break it up. Psychologically, this might be when life puts pressure on our values and our beliefs. Then there's dissolution, dissolution. During dissolution, the substance particles are separated and surrounded by solvent molecules, making them more vulnerable to creating something new. Psychologically, the pressure is keeping up. Our beliefs are being challenged. It is becoming a steady ache. We can think of nothing else. At this stage, we often don't see ourselves as what needs to change, but everything else. It's painful. And then there is conjunction, the combining of substances to form new compounds. Eventually, something changes. We may just remove ourselves from the source of heat, retain our old beliefs, and we're just fine or we may realize that we have the capacity to change. We change our thoughts, our feelings, something shifts within us, and we become something new. Here is an example. Let's imagine that I've lived my adult life independently. I've lived in my own home, had a satisfying career, nurtured my friendships, life is good but gradually heat is exerted. I can't get up the stairs to clean the upstairs bathroom anymore. The lawnmower broke down, and if I get down on the floor to fix it, I may never get up. Or perhaps I can't always remember when last I went out, and recently I got just a little bit lost. My elemental need for autonomy and independence is threatened. It is part of who I am and fear rises to swallow me. This could be seen as calcination, 
the aging process, the application being of heat. I can think of nothing else. My life becomes consumed by anxiety and I experience crushing loneliness as my subconscious desperately, constantly tries to find a way through this. Alternately, trying to find a way back to what was normal or letting go of my norms. I feel as though I am coming undone. This could be seen as disillusion the stage about letting go, releasing old patterns and beliefs that perhaps no longer serve me. What's left of me? What's left of my life without independence, without autonomy? I have let go of so much, but surprisingly, I'm still here. Somehow, I have shed the drive to keep up, to keep learning, to keep giving. And I am still. There is a peace in me as I merge with the life that is around me. I have found that there was so much that I strove for that I forgot to listen. Now, my body is quieter and my soul much louder. This could be conjunction, the emerging of something new. I wonder if we can take a moment right now for each of us to explore what might need to change in your life right now. We're going to give some room for awareness to come to the surface. I will lead us in a guided meditation. This meditation will take maybe five minutes, so please, if you feel comfortable, take a deep breath. Take a deep breath through your nose, filling your lungs fully. Hold it for a moment. Now slowly exhale through your mouth, letting go of any tension. Feel the ground beneath you supporting you. With each breath, imagine roots extending from your body into the earth, grounding you in the present moment. Let these roots anchor you. Provide stability as we explore the theme of change. Now bring your focus to your breath. Inhale deeply, allowing your abdomen to rise. Hold for a moment and then exhale gently. With each inhalation, invite calm and clarity into your being. With each exhalation, release any worries or fears you might have about change. Picture these concerns floating away like clouds drifting across the sky. Continue this rhythmic breathing, feeling more relaxed with each cycle. Inhale peace, exhale tension.
Allow your breath to guide you deeper into stillness. As you settle into this state of calm, bring to mind a change that you are currently facing or one that you anticipate. Acknowledge this change without judgment. Simply observe it as part of your life journey. Ask yourself, what emotions arise when I think about this change? Notice them, no judgment. Allow yourself to feel these emotions fear, excitement, uncertainty, hope. Know that all your feelings are valid. Now imagine wrapping these feelings in a warm, soft light. This light represents acceptance. As you breathe in, visualize this light growing brighter and surrounding you. Feel its warmth and comfort. As you exhale, release the need to control the outcome of this change. You are safe right here, right now. Repeat silently to yourself, I accept the changes in my life. I trust the process of transformation. Allow these words to resonate within you, creating a sense of ease and openness. Next, envision the change you are facing as a river flowing before you. Observe how the water moves gracefully adapting to the rocks and bends in its path. Just as the river flows, so too can you navigate your changes with grace. Picture yourself stepping into this river. Feel the cool water around you as it embraces you. Allow the current to guide you forward, trusting it will lead you where you need to go. With each breath, feel yourself becoming more fluid and adaptable. As you flow with the river, acknowledge your inner strength and resilience. You have faced challenges before, and you have emerged stronger each time. Remind yourself of this truth. I have the strength to navigate through change. I am capable of growth and transformation. Take a moment to reflect on the lessons you can learn from this experience. What opportunities does this change present? 
How might it help you grow? Allow these insights to fill you with hope and inspiration. Now slowly bring your awareness back to your breath. Inhale deeply and exhale fully. Wiggle your fingers and toes, grounding yourself again in the present moment. When you feel ready, gently open your eyes. As you transition back into your day, Carry this sense of acceptance and resilience with you, remembering that change is not just an end, but also a new beginning filled with potential. Embrace it and trust in your ability to navigate the currents of life. I'm going to say a brief word about the song which we're about to sing. I Dreamed of Rain, it doesn't seem like the most appropriate anthem for this time of year. But Jan wrote something about it, the composer. She said, I grew up in Colorado and take the natural world as my birthright. I find great comfort in the images of rain, clear running rivers, moonrise guardian stars and flowers blooming in the desert. It had been a particularly hot, dry year in 2002, and wildfires were raging across much of the western US. The political scene felt equally troubling and out of control for me. The American government seemed intent on invading Iraq. It was as if the whole world was on fire. In the midst of all of this unrest, I began to have dreams of rain, the kind of luscious healing rain that comes to renew the natural world and the human soul after a long drought. The words and music for this song are a direct translation of this exhilarating feeling. We no longer have to repeat the mistakes of our ancestors. We are free to forgive, release the pain, and start over again. I dreamed of rain.
extraordinary is it that we human creatures can have a need, imagine a solution, bring together more people who have the experience to materialize this vision, and then make it. We absolutely take this for granted, but it is extraordinary. Usually, when we think of homelessness, we think how terrible it is that there are not enough services, and how there are so many people on the streets still, and don't they have anywhere to go? And I agree with all that. There is a place for this. And isn't it terrible? Now, I just want to say a word. I have so many slides that I have to actually show the slides while I'm talking about other things. So please bear with me. The slides don't necessarily correlate to what I'm saying. So in this second part of the reflection, I want to focus on how extraordinary are the services available in Vancouver for folk who are vulnerable to being unhoused. We so often speak about what's not done, what's not enough, what's not there, and today I will shout from the rafters how extraordinary it is of what is here. Yes, we see folk who are addicted and on the streets. Yes, we see folk with mental illness, barely coping. But do you know what we are not seeing? And I would like to say that every one of these pictures that you're seeing is housing of some sort for people who are, current, who are at risk of being unhoused. We are not seeing all the people that are being cared for by our hospitals, by social workers, by street workers who work in the middle of the night bringing friendship and tea to folk who feel more at home outside under a bridge than in a shelter. We don't see the thousands of people who across Canada are sheltered in housing with the supports that they need to keep them from being evicted again. There are literally hundreds of organizations in the Lower Mainland that seek to serve the needs of people coping with poverty, mental illness and or addictions. But today, I would like to speak about the extraordinary accomplishments of just one of these societies. It's called the Lookout Housing and Health Society. The Lookout Housing and Health Society was founded in 1971. And here I'm quoting from their history page. In 1970, staff in a youth hostel, Connolly House, identified an upward trend of older homeless men requesting beds. Not able to help because of age restrictions and finding no resources for these men to go to, applications were made to the federal government under a youth initiative program to establish a three-bed, nighttime-only shelter in the area then known as Skid Row. As a result, the Lookout Shelter was founded in 1971, having street patrols which picked up shelterless people off the streets. It was quickly learned that these individuals, primarily the older chronic street alcoholics, required help in sorting out their problems, accessing services or treatment, and getting accommodation. 24-hour service was rapidly implemented and the number of emergency beds was increased. Lookout's original downtown shelter evolved into their first purpose-built shelter in 1981 and it was called the Downtown Housing Centre. This 46-bed shelter has 39 units of transitional housing. Transitional housing is usually for two to three years while folks try to find permanent housing for the individual. This was just the beginning. Since then, Lookout has continuously seen an evolving need and worked to find ways to meet that need. The needs range from nighttime shelters, and there are now 381 beds. Now, I should say something about my numbers. This site was quite old, and it's very possible that there are now more beds. And also, these are only what Lookout Shelter runs. Lookout support services and housing runs. Cold weather emergency shelters. There are hundreds of night only cots. Day activities and places to gather. 150 people use the Powell Street getaway daily. 
This was specifically designed for people who have mental illness, who spend the night in a shelter and then don't have anywhere to go during the day. Vocational training and support. There is culinary training in the Sakura So building. Transitional house, 91 housing units. There are also 746 sleeping rooms. Many of you will, all, will know and have driven by the hotels that are in the downtown east side core. And they kind of look pretty shabby from the outside. A while ago, probably about 10 years ago now, um, the government saw the writing on the wall that rents of hotel rooms and all rents were going to start to skyrocket. So instead of making these hotel rooms unreachable for people who needed them, they bought them. They put social workers in place, occupational therapists, and support systems in place so people could be sure to get some food, some care, some ongoing support. So those are called sleeping rooms, and I'll say again, there are now 746 run by the Lookout Shelter. Permanent housing. There are 313 apartments as of the time that this site was created. This is enormous, and I don't want to be saying it's enough. This would not happen if people like you and this congregation didn't put their back into creating more of these services, seeing what is needed, and creating the alchemy to make that happen. You are part of the solution, each and every one of you. This community of the North Shore Unitarians contributes all of their Sunday morning givings to 10 different nonprofit organizations, one of which is the church, and the givings for that month go to people who are members or attenders of the congregation who for some reason need help with their basic bills. This year, three are environmentally focused and seven are focused on social justice. Lookout Shelter is one of them, as is the North Shore Women's Centre in the North Vancouver. This community, NSUC, gives you a place to be renewed and to support each other and get support yourself. I strongly encourage each of you to support this life-sustaining community and find a non-profit that you can support. Be proud. You do make a difference. Humans, we take clay, we add determination and a dash of magic, and you create alchemy. <sighs> Invitation to the offering. The offering this week will be taken to support the work of the food stash. Food Stash's main purpose is to rescue food that would otherwise be wasted and get it to families and organizations who can really use it. Close, get this, close to 58% of the food produced in Canada is wasted. Food Stash Foundation has a twofold mission to prevent good food from going to waste and to provide dignified food access to promote a thriving planet and a healthy community. Last year, Food Stash was able to keep 1.5 million pounds of good food from going to waste and provides dignified food access to 36 other community organizations, 120 low-income households with disabilities or long-term illnesses, an average of 101 average market members each week and countless community members throughout our community fridge. Food Stash's vision is a transformed, sustainable, and just food system that supports food access for all and a thriving environment. Please give as generously as you are able to help support this vital organization. Will the ushers please take the offering? And Fraser Union is going to bless us with another song, I Ain't Got No Home. Hello. Well, I'm very glad to be here today and uh, even gladder now that I've heard Alison speak. Uh, I can't think of a more inspiring uh, moment to bring us 
face to face with the things that we can do. And as she said, we hear so much about what isn't being done, but it's wonderful to get that kind of inspiration to work on what has been done and make it better. So thank you for that, Alison. And I think uh, this song was actually written originally by Woody Guthrie. So it's referring primarily to <coughs> Uh, the 1930s in the United States, but uh, Barry and I have updated the verses in it and made it much more local. So it actually refers to places you know in Vancouver. Thank you so much. I think this is the first of many times we're going to have you guys over. Great. <laughs> the life of the church is active in many ways to nurture those within the community and those in the wider community. Here are a few announcements. An invitation to enjoy a casserole lunch made for us by the absolutely amazing Diane Hicks. If you can, She's not here right now. She, she makes these out of the goodness of her heart. It's incredible. So please give her thanks. It makes such a difference. And Steele is sick this morning. He usually helps with cleanup. Is there anyone who feels they can help a bit with doing some cleanup, washing the dishes? It's a raucous party time that everybody has. Thank you. 
next week's service. Bruce, do you want to say something about because they made it, here we are? Well, hi, everyone. Um, yeah, so next week, um, who knows what the vibe is going to be. We may have to adjust things a little bit, but um, it's a Remembrance Day service, and I'm going to tell um, within it a little, one little very personal story about my father and his war experiences, which I was able to kind of piece together by tracking down three members of his air crew about 35 years ago. So that'll be the linchpin of it all, and we'll see how it goes. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce. It will be wonderful, as always. Uh, Trisha Mason's Fun Fest event. There are still a couple of tickets left for Trisha Mason's Fun Fest event. It was a dark and stormy night. Haha. <laughs> On Saturday, November 27th. You can sign up for the event. The sign up poster is in the stairwell landing. As you go downstairs, if you just take a look after the first set of stairs, it's right there. Me, yes. Sorry, it's the 9th, not Aha, thank you. November the 9th. That's very important. Thank you. November 9th. That means, what's today? It's next Saturday. Thank you very much. Okay. I would like to introduce Elaine to come up to say a few words. But before Elaine comes up, I just want to say, I remember the first day you walked into the church, Elaine, and I looked at you and went, there's a woman who's done something. Elaine has spent her life in service to others. She was instrumental in developing thousands of units of nonprofit housing in the Lower Mainland. She is serving and has served on the board of the Phoenix Drug and Alcohol Society for 11 years after a lifetime of working with nonprofits. She is also sitting on our board and is speaking about our canvas. Thank you, Elaine. Those, those slides um, take me back. <laughs> I worked in that area. Uh, well, we got through Halloween, and now it's November, and it's Canvas Month. Uh, thinking about what I would say this morning, I recalled a trip that our family took across Canada several years ago. And we arrived at our friend's house in St. John's, Newfoundland, where Kay and Terry promptly told us we were heading two hours up the coast to Happy Adventure, which was a tiny fishing village that Kay's family had maintained for many years as a family holiday getaway. What a place. It could have served as a photo shoot for those Newfoundland and Labrador tourist ads you see on TV. Absolutely gorgeous. Among the many delights was a walk down to the boats to meet the boats coming in uh, to pick up some lobster for dinner. But more relevant to the topic of Canvas Month was a visit um, to the local Anglican church, which looked just like you would expect. A small white wooden structure perfectly maintained over many decades. Entering the church, the first thing I spotted was a chalkboard on display. That was just an earring. <laughs> Entering the church, the first thing on display was a chalkboard with a list of all the members down one side. And beside their name was the amount that each member had contributed that year. <laughs> Talk about shaming. <laughs> well, you know, we don't do that here. In fact, we go to extraordinary lengths to keep your pledge private and confidential. So you received our letter a few days ago, and I won't repeat it but I simply ask that you consider what you're able to pledge in support of all the things that we do here. The other day, someone asked me, what's the right amount to pledge? I replied, um, 
Everyone has unique circumstances, and the right amount is what's right for them and what makes them feel good. Not satisfied with the answer, I was asked again, <laughs> well, isn't there some guideline or idea on what individuals should pledge? I thought for a minute, and this is what I came up with. I remember a few years ago, the UU a community talked about a pledge of 3% of income. One, that was one idea I came up with. Uh, the other idea I came up with is that our average pledge last year was $1,634. So that might be a guideline that you might want to think about. If your last year's pledge is lower than the average, maybe you want to edge it closer. If it's higher, maybe you can still consider uh, increasing it. But the guideline that I consider most important and I really want to emphasize is whatever you feel comfortable contributing to this community is more than gratefully received. It's, there's no guideline that fits every person and it's whatever you feel good about is the amount that we ask you to pledge. So Allison, can you help me conclude this? I can. <laughs> love this song. If anyone could tell me why or what it means after the service, I would be gratefully receiving your information. We're now going to sing the Cohen Alleluia. Please rise. Now I've heard Secret call that David laid and that pleased the Lord, but you don't really care for music, do you? It goes like this the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall, the major lift, the battle king, the closing, hallelujah. If you want the harmony, feel free. Oh, my God. 
my best, it wasn't much. I couldn't feel, so I tried to touch. I've told the truth, I didn't want to fool you. And even though it all went wrong, I'll stand before the Lord of song with nothing. have the capacity to change. You can change what you have the power to change. You. Sit with the discomfort. Name the problem. Ask for help. Pay attention for unexpected solutions. The answer may not be what you expect and be open to being changed. When we can no longer sustain the fight to defend our learned beliefs and we truly ask for help. In the privacy of your own heart, we are shown another way. Is this the subconscious or is this spirit guides or your ancestors? I do not know but sometimes it opens the door to alchemy. Let us conclude by taking our chalice into our hearts. We extinguish this flame. The world calls to, to us to live with depth, meaning, and purpose. We go forth with courage and love. Let us join our hands and sing together, circle round for freedom. <laughs> <laughs>